Hi guys, it's Orlando City UK here today and I'm delighted to say I'm joined by a very special guest today. You all know her on Twitter as Kirby Hazard. It's Orlando City UK member and fellow Orlando City diehard Charlotte Patterson. Welcome to the show. Hi, thank you for having me. It's great to have a chat. Absolutely, yeah. Pleasure to speak to you now. With all the hype and anticipation building right now ahead of the 2021 MLS campaign, honestly, mate, I couldn't think of anybody better to preview it than with you. So we're going to split this interview into three parts today. Now, we're going to speak to Charlotte about how she fell in love with Orlando City. Um, we're going to take a deep dive into 2021 and what the season could hold under Oscar Perea. And we're going to take a um, quick fire list of miscellaneous Orlando City questions with Charlotte as well. There's so much to get through today. So um, without further ado, let's let's dive in. So part one, um, really interested to hear this from you. Um, we know you're head and heels with, in love with the club, but tell us in your own words, what does Orlando City mean to you and why did you first start supporting them? Uh, it, it means the world to me. I mean... Yeah, it, it all kind of started from when I was younger. Obviously, I went on holiday to Florida a few times with my family, you know, very similar to a few other people who uh, follow Orlando from the UK. And just going there on holiday, I became, you know, infatuated with the place, you know, the, the culture, the weather, the, the food, you know, it wasn't all just about Disneyland and all the theme parks. It just was such an amazing place to go to. And it kind of started from there. Um, Obviously, at the time, I couldn't really follow Orlando when they were in USL, when they'd moved from, from Austin. Um, so it was when they joined MLS, obviously, Sky Sports started to show a lot more coverage of the games. And, you know, at first, it was just kind of a small interest. I was like, oh, yeah, well, I quite liked Orlando. I'll just kind of follow their games. And yeah. then it kind of just blew from there. And obviously, um, I'd just got Twitter at the time. And I think I'd tweeted about one of the uh, games. I think it was Orlando against New York um, not New York, uh, New York, New England Revolution. And I think you tweeted me at the time saying, oh, there's a group of us, you know, that we all follow sort of Orlando from the UK. And it's just grown from then, this incredible thing. And I just absolutely love everything about the club. Yeah, yeah, no, you summed up well. Like, um, I'm just so excited right now. We love this time of year. Now, um, you mentioned it there, your, um, your Twitter account. Um, I was on Twitter not too long before you as well. And I know you love engaging with the um, Orlando City supporters over there in the States. Um, you've gone, you know, you've visited, um, you've gone to Exploria Stadium yourself as well. Tell us, how welcoming did the club and supporters make you feel? And did it feel like you were home? Yeah, it, honestly, it really did. I mean, the the fans and the community there are just the, the second to none. I've never experienced that, even in all of my years of, you know, supporting English football in Sutherland. You know, everybody just welcomed me with open arms, whether it was just engaging me over Twitter. And, you know, there's so many of the fans that have like made sort of sacrifices or, you know, generosity that they've shown to me. You know, um, there was a fan who saved up loyalty points so that I could get a tour of Exploria Stadium. Uh, everybody was inviting me to come to the tailgate and, um, you know, um, watch sort of the, the march down to the stadium, you know, taking part in the drums and the flares. Yeah. Uh, there's a few guys who, um, when MLS were releasing the Adidas uh, Parley, the recycled shirts, yeah. you know, that was really hard to get hold of, you know, the fans be like, oh, I'll get one for you and we'll send it over to you. And Amazing. they're just absolutely fantastic. Um, you know, I, I can't, like the majority of my Twitter is just Orlando City fans and I, I absolutely love it. You know, it, they're just incredible, you know, such loyal, passionate fans. And I'm not saying that to be biased, but I've seen it, you know, going over there. Um, I've been to Exploria twice now and the, the game days are just incredible and the fans are just incredible, you know, despite all of the, you know, kind of uh, poor seasons that we've had, you know, they've, yeah. they've held strong and they're still there, they're still fighting. Yeah. You've touched on it there, like the, the selflessness. And I back Charlotte up with this as well. Like, honestly, over the years, I mean, the last time I visited, um, um, yeah, the beginning of last season seems like forever ago now. Went to the mm. Rapid tailgate. Forgive me, I can't remember who gave me it. Someone just gave me a smoke grenade and they're like, there you go, patted me on the back. And I was like, this is amazing. And I think just that kind of sums up our fan base, that they're a family who look out for each other. So you're absolutely right. Now, for any listeners who don't know already, um, I'm a massive Arsenal supporter, Charlotte's massive Sunderland supporter. Um, now, we're forever going to support these clubs, aren't we? They're our childhood clubs. But quickly, tell us what makes Orlando City different from your English club? 
Um, I suppose it's a hard one. I mean, growing up and obviously supporting Sunderland, it's not been the prettiest or nicest of football to watch for pretty much the entirety of my life. So kind of from there, I've always had another sort of room in my heart to to follow another team. And I don't know with Orlando, there's just such more of a, a family and community presence. Obviously, like English football, and, and this isn't sort of um, anything bad, but it is, you know, heavily dominated by, you know, older males, whereas, you know, in sort of MLS and other leagues, um, you know, it's a lot more family orientated. So there's a lot of kids at the games, there's lots of women at the games. And, you know, you just felt part of that. And, you know, kind of like what you touched on before, you know, going there, I, f- I felt like I was at home, which is bizarre considering, yeah. you know, the, the distance between the two. And mm-hmm. Yeah, it just I, everybody's been there and opened me, you know, with with welcoming arms. You know, people were coming up to me in the the stadium, be like, "Can we get a photo with you?" And yeah. you know, oh, you're Kirby Hazard from Twitter. I, I like your memes or your your, your yeah. um, football how, shirts. How weird, how weird is that? Because we've had the same over the years, and like. You know, I'm just like I'm a like an everyday guy. I'm like, okay, it's like yeah, pretty much the same. I'm like, why why would you want to meet me? <laughs> like, I was the why, same. Why would you want to come? But yeah, they're, they're just amazing. And you know, when they did come to meet me, we, we chatted for a while, and like they would buy me drinks. And yeah, just it's a really friendly atmosphere, and you just feel so comfortable, and, and you don't feel like you're an outsider from the UK. You don't no. feel like you're somebody who you know has um ties with other clubs they just treat you like an Orlando fan yeah. and, and that's what I absolutely love yeah I mean there's a lot of um divisiveness in the world you know I can say hand on heart since the beginning I know you feel the same way since we started Orlando City UK it's been nothing but love you know over there like all of the guys have welcomed us in you know they support what we do and we're one big family so it is amazing though OC Twitter really is a big part of the love for me and I know it is for you too now, yeah. before we finish off this segment, we've spoke about OC Twitter there. Tell our listeners about your, this is amazing, by the way. Tell our listeners about your amazing donation plans for um, 2021. Uh, yeah, so um, something that I did last year, obviously 2020 was a difficult year for most people because of COVID. And um, so I just wanted to do a little bit to give back, which so towards the, the end of the season for the playoffs, um, I think I was I donated £5 for every goal that Orlando scored and £10 for every clean sheet that they kept. And all of that was going to get donated to the Orlando City Foundation, which it did. There was a few of the people who joined in. And obviously, I think the hopes for 2021 was that things were going to get better, but they're still kind of the same. So with that in mind, um, I want to incorporate that into this season. So as of, you know, um, April 17th for the entire duration of the season, we'll be donating uh, £5 for every goal that Orlando score. And um, that's, you know, for every every game. So, uh, but there's been such a a good response to it. I think I've had, you know, uh, maybe 10, 15 people, other Orlando fans saying, but we'll chip in, we'll do it too. So, you know, I think I'd, I'd totted it up and, you know, so far it's looking likely, you know, if you go off of, I think Orlando scored something like 40, 41 goals last season. And if we kind of go off of that or maybe hope for more, we've, we've already kind of, we're going to be donating 2,000, you know, pounds to the Orlando City Foundation. And that's just so far, you know, that's if Orlando don't like break the net every single game. They're probably going to bankrupt me, but I absolutely love it. <laughs> well, I was going to say just that, I mean, incredible gesture and, you know, like follow Charlotte's lead. It's all going to the amazing, worthy cause that is the Orlando City Foundation. But mistake me if I'm wrong I think it was Miguel Gallardo he said they're gonna bankrupt you girl and like yeah, yeah. in the mix now as well you know like um who knows you know we could smash all records in front of goal but you know like Charlotte says amazing cause and definitely get behind it so 2021 now let's let's get into it I mean look at our faces we weren't like this in the previous years I mean this is a new feeling still right it feels good to yeah. wear the jacket the jacket of you know hope and expectation um yeah so this is our 2021 season preview now MLS is back tournament final MLS cup playoffs for the first time this time last season or you know what I mean there's no way we could have predicted that under Oscar Pereira I mean it really was a nine out of ten season um, if we won MLS is back, you know, it's a 10 out of 10. But um, he's completely turned around a losing culture, what went before under Heath, O'Connor, Price. Um, how, how, how hopeful are you heading into 2021? Is playoffs are certainly, I see a lot of the experts saying, yeah, we're going to clinch third, fourth in the East. But where is this, ce- this team's ceiling this year for you? 
Yeah, I think playoffs without a doubt have to be our, our main goal. We have to make it again. You know, we have to do better than what we did on, on last season. I think we've got the squad now to to show that we should be, you know, a real powerhouse in the, the Eastern Conference. You know, obviously, I think last year we had an incredible season, you know, with the MLS's back tournament. And then obviously once the, the league resumed as well, but it was towards sort of the tail end that we just slightly... Um, sort of took our foot off of the, the pedal a little bit where we could, I, th I honestly think we could have finished, you know, first. I think we could have topped it, but it was just those last few games. And, you know, we played so well all season. And obviously when we were in the playoffs, the, the game against uh, New York City was just, I mean, incredible from start yeah. to finish. And, we could you do know, a whole I really show on that game, right? We could do a whole yeah. few minutes on that game. Oh, I mean, it's just, yeah, uh, my heart was just going like 100 miles a minute watching that game. But yeah, you'd think, you know, with that, the, the way that it ended, that it would have given us that push against New York, um, not New York, sorry, um, New England, but it just, mm -hmm. it didn't work out that way, you know. Um, so I'm hoping, you know, that we kind of emulate something very similar this season. I hope that we, you know, we qualify for playoffs. I would like to think that, we can get further in the competition, you know, maybe to the semi-finals, the final. I'm not going to be completely unrealistic and say, yeah, we're yeah. going to go on and win it, even though I think truly we are capable. But I think just just seeing that improvement from from the squad, you know, it isn't about results at the end of the day. It's just seeing that fight and that grit, which we've lacked the last sort of four or five years up until last season. There was just no heart on the on the pitch. You know, the, there was no. players there who I just think, you know, turned up for a paycheck or it just seems so disinterested where this group with uh, with Pappy just everybody looks like they all you know love each other that they would fight for each other and that's everything that we need so I think yeah I, I'm expecting really big things from them this season yeah me too um well summed up and I, I think Pereira is critical to all of this you know there there's Muzi and there's Ricardo Moreira and the guys behind the scenes but Pereira really has brought these guys together you know like you can I've said this on previous podcasts and stuff you know you can kind of do the hot takes on Twitter you can scroll down the tunnel and be that looks cool but I think it genuinely is authentic with us you know I think he really has got a band of brothers together that all fight for each other so I think it bodes well now the next one I want to know who's your one to watch um, for Orlando City in 2021 I know you've long been an admirer of Chris Mueller I mean, everyone on OC Twitter knows that, right? He's your boy, and he proved he proved you completely right last year. Um, 10 MLS goals, subsequent call-ups to the US men's national team. Now, I want to know, if he was your one to watch in 2020, um, who's your one to watch for Orlando City in 2021? Yeah, you know, this one's been so much harder for me than other years because I think we've added so much, you know, depth and silence. I mean, our attack in midfield's just completely bolstered, um, you know, burst at the seams. So it is really hard. I mean, I always kind of like to go for the more unknown quantities. So, um, you know, obviously it'd be easy to be like, yeah, Nanny's going to have a fantastic season or Pat was going to have a brilliant season. But I like going for like the younger, more unknown ones. So, you know, I was quite impressed with um, Wilfredo uh, Rivera from OCB, who I think has been called up now to the to the senior squad. You know, I don't know obviously how much game time that he's going to get, but, you know, I, I, th I really think he's got potential to be a, a big player for us. And a full international um, but, as well at 17 years old, which, you know, that's yeah. no mean feat either. Yeah, well, that's it. I mean, I did watch a few OCB games last year and he didn't look out of place, bearing in mind, I think he was about 16 at that time as well. Yeah. You know, he, you know, he was able to like really show the players off. His pace was incredible, his eye for goal as well. So whether he gets much game time, I don't know, but I'm certainly going to be keeping an eye on him for the season. But I also think um, Matthias Ayas as well. Um, you know, obviously we didn't really get to see a lot of him last year. Um I think and, a lot of people have been sleeping on IS. I mean, yeah. he's, not really, he's a new signing pretty much. Yeah, and that's it. I mean, I always forget as well that he's uh, he's quite young still. I mean, he's 24, which I mean, it is young for anybody else, but in football terms, you yeah. could be seen as, you know, getting on. But yeah, I think obviously with Daryl DK being out on loan and obviously it's unknown as to what's going to happen there that, you know, we might see him come into the, the fold a little bit more. So yeah, those, those are kind of like my two players that I'm going to be keep kind of keeping an eye out for, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, this was a question I've scheduled for later, but you mentioned him there. I think it segues into it nicely. Daryl DK, man. I mean, I I did an interview with Dan, fellow um, Orlando City UK member, the day this dropped. And we were both on the pod for 40 minutes. And at the end of it, we still couldn't believe he was in England. He'd made a move to Barnsley. Now, you know, we're, we're some time down the road now and he's absolutely smashed it. Um, correct me if I'm wrong. I think he has five goals, doesn't he? And he's 
got US men's national team caps since the move. Um, quite simply, do we see him again on the field for Orlando City or, you know, um, what fee do we cash out for? What, what's your take on DK? He's been amazing. Yeah, I completely agree. I mean, uh, when it happened, it came as a huge shock. I mean, I suppose at that time it was unknown as to whether MLS was going to actually kind of, uh, the, the season was going to start. There was, you yeah. know, a lot of hum and harring, so I can understand why he went out on loan. Um, but yeah, he's, he's absolutely smashing it there. And I mean, it's not even just about the goals, but the games that I've watched him in, you know, he plays such a, a vital role, you know, holding up the ball, getting other players involved, his strength, his pace. Um, he's just showed incredible skill and, you know, he's shown that he can do it um, in, you know, in England and in the championship. Um, it's a hard one because, you know, he's such a good player. He was a good player for us. So naturally, I kind of want him to come back. But, you know, he's yeah. such a young player with a high ceiling and so much potential that, you know, obviously uh, there's the rumours of 10 million. There's the rumours of 20 million. Um, I, I personally see it as a win-win situation. You know, if we can sell him for 20 million it's great I mean obviously I'd be sad to see him go but you know the players that we could bring in with that yeah. um but if he doesn't go for that price to, I can't see Orlando accepting anything less than that you know you have to factor in his youth like you know how young he is um his potential is ceiling you know what he showed already I you know despite what some of the pundits are saying that we've, we've been too greedy and that we should have accepted 10 million no I, yeah. I don't think that we should settle for the lowest You're um right. you know if, if nobody goes for that 20 million price tag then he comes back to us so it's I, I see it as a win-win I think he would come if he doesn't get sold uh to anybody I think he'll come back here with like a good sort of chip on his shoulder and be really sort of motivated to be like right I'm gonna make this my season to like really stand out and show people what I'm I'm made of and so if he does come back I could see him having a fantastic season and then being well worth that 20 million you know in the, in the following year's time so I, I see it as a win-win personally I think it is a win-win. And um, just before we move on to our next question, Inter Miami passed on him twice. Twice. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I just had to get it in. I had to get crazy. it in. Crazy. Absolutely crazy. Now, um, I know in your own football career, so you you play goalkeeper, don't you? Um, yeah. We've had, oh, let me wreck my brains now. Since entering MLS, we've had Donovan Ricketts, Tally Hall, um, Joe Bendick, of course, um, Brian Rowe. Um, loads of sub goalies, but tell us what Pedro Gallese, El Pulpo, what has he brought to Orlando City that simply wasn't there before? Um, he's brought like I don't want to use the term like swagger, but kind of like there's a fine line between arrogance and confidence, and, and Pedro is confidence. And you know, he comes in and he, he he's more than you know, well aware of his abilities and his skills. You know, he's confident in net, he's confident in the, the back four that's in front of him. You know, we've already seen that he's developed quite a good, you know, um, relationship with the likes of, of Janssen and Carlos, you know, despite the, the language barriers as well. Mm -hmm. And, you know, he just, it, it's so, such a relief to have a, a player that you can, you can trust, you know, there was no point last season where I was like, oh gosh, he's, he's going to get chipped or, yeah. you know, having a PTSD of past traumas from goals that have been scored against our previous There's keepers. Many. There's many. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, I, I just don't get that. I, you know, I completely trust in him and his abilities. And I mean, the, the amount of saves that he pulled off last year and, you know, really vital ones that kept us in the game. I can't remember if it was against, um, New York City in the playoffs and uh, yeah. you know I think it was right towards the end of the game and, and extra time and he, the, um, I can't remember who it was for New York but he was through on and it was 1v1 and he just stuck out this big thick arm and just completely you know saved it and you know kept us in the game the technical yes not arm yeah <laughs> um, no he's just such a talented player you know obviously having somebody who's um, an international as well and he's got a lot of experience in various countries and yeah it's just so so good to have somebody that you can rely on and uh, the players seem confident in his, in his abilities as yeah. well and that's what you need between the sticks is you need a confident goalkeeper mm. he, he has been an absolute game changer in that for Orlando City um, I mean we love Joe Bendick he made those kind of one-on-one -on -one stops over the years but I mean it was like shoot on site policy for every opponent because our defence was just horrible um, <laughs> yeah. you know every goal he's going to need to make stops but Galese makes those stops and we saw it in MLS's back and it just rolled on and on he makes the stops that keeps you in the game to then win it late on I think that's what we've added in him and you know this year's going to be interesting because there's for the schedule planners it's crazy there's so much international and domestic tournaments going on seemingly every week you know this season but we've got Brandon Austin as backup now um, from Spurs um, 
you know, dual national England, USA, he will be chomping at the bit as well behind Galesse. So that, that pushes him as well. You know, Brian Rowe, when he stepped in last year, was good. But I think we have really good competition there this year. So um, interesting to see um, El Pulpo again. Can't wait to see him on the pitch. Now, this next one, um, I know you're an avid listener of podcasts. Me too. I've been, that's all I've been doing for the last couple of weeks, building up to the uh, this season. <laughs> Um, I've been listening to the guys at Extra Time, Andrew Wiebe, Matt Doyle, David Gass, those guys over there in the States. Now, with their team previews, they've been asking this question. They're like, what is each team's potential dog sipping tea surrounded by fire moment? You, you know the meme. It's the, yeah. this is fine. You know, <laughs> Everything's the, fine, yeah. <laughs> fine, you know, we've had a lot of those, you know, 2015, 2019, right? But yeah, pretty much. What is, what is Orlando City's potential... Um, Every this is fine moment this season. Is it DK getting sold and Pato not producing the goods? Is it Nanny getting hurt? What do you think? Yeah, I, I, obviously it's a, yeah DK getting sold is obviously a big one, but um, I suppose it's the the players that we're we're really looking to to you know add that that sort of veteran uh, expertise. You know the likes of Nanny and Pato who you know have done it in various countries, and you know we expect big things from them. And the worry is you know what if they don't perform? You know obviously. Um, I mean, Nani was brilliant last season and I've seen yeah. Pat yeah. from sort of the preseason, you know, he doesn't look like he's lost it and he looks like he's in a good place, but yeah. I'm not he's too worried. He's because... happy, doesn't he, Pat to be there, like genuinely? Yeah, I mean, every photo I think that I see of him is of him smiling and he already seems to have struck up quite a good um, sort of link of play with, with like the Chris Mueller and I think it was uh, Dodson as well. And yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I mean... Obviously, the, there is those worries that the players that did so well for us last year aren't going to sort of live up to those expectations. But I think we've really added a lot of depth. Obviously, we've got Van der Waart who's come in as well. Uh, Chris Mueller, obviously, you know, he's, he's each season he's showed that he's getting better and better. And uh, there's Benji Michelle and there's Alvarado as well, who's, you know, on the wings. Um, there's lots of people who are chomping at the bit. So I think there's that pressure on those veteran players to, to keep on doing so well because there's plenty of you know younger players who are you know vying to get that that mm. position and, and fighting them for it so I, I'm, I'm not too worried personally I, I think that from what I've sort of seen of um, in like pre-season and obviously I know the Daryl DK situation is kind of up in arms at the moment but I think we've got yeah. enough about us to be as good as we were last year. Yeah, for me, I think the only, um, and we tried to address it with Jonathan Suarez, we know what happened there, of course. Um, I think the only thing for me, I think this team is stacked. I mean, it made me laugh earlier in the offseason. Um, one Orlando City fan, he mocked up his um, 11 on paper and it was just all wingers. You know, I mean, yeah, I can saw that. that. <laughs> it made me laugh. But I think the only thing for me, and the club may well address it, you know, in, you know, in the coming um, week or so, um, but left back, I mean, we saw Jean Moutinho, who's so vital to the way we play, crossing from that left-hand side, dovetailing with Nani. Um, we saw him got injured at um, Atlanta United last season. Um, Kyle Smith stepped in. Um, Kamal Miller stepped in sometimes. Um, and we just weren't the same on that side. We had Juan bombing forward down the right and left back was a kind of stay at home, play safe now. Obviously, Suarez isn't going to be an Orlando City player. Um, the club have not addressed it yet. They have signed up the accountant, you know, the tax man himself, Kyle. Yeah. <laughs> he did do an all right job there, you know, especially on the road last season. But I think for me, just nailing that left back spot, um, then we'll be good to go. Yeah, no, I completely agree. I think there's still a lot uh, in the often. I think Orlando's business isn't done yet and you know it might well be into the summer but I, I think you know Kyle Smith's very much like a, a silent assassin in the way he goes about things you know he's not the most glamorous player he's not the person who you're going to expect goals or assists from but he does his job and he does it really well you know he's a lot more defensive minded than Ruan is and I, th I, th I personally I have quite a lot of you know trust and faith of him if he's going to you know start as a as left back and you know you can have Ruan going up on the right wings and you know yeah. being more defensive on the left so yeah. Uh, but yeah, like you said, I think that that would be yeah, my only kind of concern is that it would be great to have, you know, a really good left back to fill in, at least until sort of Jao comes back. But I, I think Kyle Smith will do a decent job filling in, at least until that can happen. Yeah, shout out Kyle Smith, by the way, as well. Congratulations on the new deal. And honestly, don't call it a comeback because that guy was getting slammed left, right and centre yeah. for years. He has been amazing, you know, his comeback under Perea, don't understate it. So shout out Kyle Smith, like, you've been, you've been brilliant when you've stepped in. So 
Right, the final thing in this 2021 season preview segment before we move on to the miscellaneous, um, back to front with everyone fit. I want to know, not versus Atlanta, because we know some players are you know going to be missing um, through suspension, injury, what have you, but everyone fit. What is your strongest Orlando City lineup right now? <sighs> it's you know what, it's such a hard one because, like we mentioned before, we've added so many players that at this point, I'm a bit like, How are we? It's, what form it are we it fun. it's harder to do, right? Yeah, <laughs> I mean, I think for me, I th- last year, um, I'm a bit of a, a stats nerd and I, I could be wrong with this, but I think 16 times last year we played with a 4 2 3 1, yeah, and I think we might line up very similarly this season. So, I think you've got, uh, I think, defense and goalkeeper is pretty much solid. So, I think you've got obviously Pedro and goal. Um, I think Kyle Smith will be left back, Jansen and Carlos at center back, and then we want it right back, and then. I'd probably say Ursul with either <laughs> Ursul with uh, either Mendes or maybe Pereira um, in, in midfield. And then I would say probably Nani, uh, Pereira and um, Mueller out on sort of like the wings and Pereira just sitting in behind the, stri- the lone striker who I think at the minute maybe Pato. I don't know. This is it with, I, I think defensively, I, I kind of know what we're going to have, but midfield and up front, I, I have no idea because we've got that many players. It's so hard. Yeah, absolutely. My my eleven is is you've said it like that. That is my eleven as well. Um, interestingly, I think Matt Doyle said in the week, um, who's Orlando City's you know key man. I think he said Uri Rozelle, and he's the only one that I don't know if he makes my eleven. But I understand yeah. the kind of rationale for putting him there. He's steady. He's an MLS vet. He's the only one I'm unsure of whether it's him or um Sabas alongside Urso in midfield, but. I think the good thing is that we have these options now. We're no weaker for swapping players in and out. And there's going to be so much of that. I mean, going back to that, you know, that funny 11 graphic of all wingers. I mean, (laughs) even at the time I was like, we don't need Van der Water. Why are we signing another winger? But as you know, the move went through and it sunk in. We've got Leagues Cup this year. We've got the US Closed Cup, as Jim Curtin said it, because yeah, (laughs) crazy how to get into that this year. you know, we've got all kinds of competitions. We've got MLS, we've got international call-ups. So, you know, the front our front office is prepared for that. You know, they've you know they've added, they've bolstered on what was already a great season last season. So, I think we should be super excited. And um, Sylvester Van der Water, he turned up yesterday. He arrived in the states. Yes, yeah. Week. So he looks at home too. So can't wait to see him on the field. Now, we've got um, around. 10 or so minutes to go. We've got enough, we've got plenty of time for this. And I've got <laughs> so many questions to ask Charlotte today. We could honestly double this Zoom and we still wouldn't be done. But this is <laughs> Probably, yeah. our, our third and final segment. I'm calling Orlando City Miscellaneous. We asked Kay Rawlins, our um, last guest, loads of questions as well. But we're okay. going to ask you some that I'm dying to know the answers. Um, first one, right? Latest you've stayed up watching Orlando City. Um, I mean, I, I don't think I could put it to a, a time because uh, I, I stay up for most of them. Uh, depends if I'm in work the next day, but the majority I will stay up. But it, obviously, it's got to be like the Western Conference games. I think, you know, um, sort of the likes of Portland or Seattle, I think the games have kicked off at maybe 3.30 or 4.30 yeah. a.m. in the morning. So by the time the game finishes, you're talking 5, 6 a.m. So, yeah, yeah um, pretty much all hours. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, yeah, you, you start supporting a team like Orlando City, like it's par for the course. You've got to stay up late. So I think for me, it was Vancouver Whitecaps one year and, you know, we don't get out there often. I think that's when I used to tweet that the kind of times when the games would finish. And I, I genuinely think I went straight to work or like I had an hour getting ready and I went to work. It was insane. Yeah, I know there's a few of us. Um, I know like Elliot, who's part of uh, OC UK as well. You know, he's, um, I think he's a radio presenter and I think he starts sort of like the, the five, six o'clock morning shift. So like he will literally w- finish watching a game at four o'clock and then go straight into work. And I've done it a few times and I'm sure plenty of us have as well. Yeah. well That's how uh, dedicated we are. Yeah, powered by Red Bull. I mean, monster Red Bull. We thrive on the yeah. energy. We have to. Coffee and energy drinks. <laughs> yeah. We know them all too well. Um, favourite TIFO so far? Oh, I don't think I could narrow it down to one. I mean, um, the two against Atlanta. So one of them was, because um, I love Kill Bill. It's like one of my favourite films. It was yeah. the You and I Have Unfinished Business. Um, oh, I think that, yeah. Just You and I Have Unfinished Business. I absolutely love that. Then there was the... Uh, the Walking Dead one as well with the Eeny Meeny Miny Mo and Negan and then obviously all the uh, 
Atlanta players. That was just fantastic. Um, but one of my favourites, I think, has got to be the, the B. Joe. Obviously, you know, that typo was a, a, a big um, nod to obviously one of the fans that unfortunately, you know, lost his life. And, um, you know, obviously the, the Ruckus and I Lion firm are just, you know, well, not even just them, but, you know, all of the entire mm -hmm. sort of fan base, you know, came behind them. And, you know, it's still something that we talk about now. And, yeah, I, I mean, um, Orlando's typo game is just brilliant. Um, every every single season, I think it was at the start of last one. It was the Leonardo DiCaprio one, and it was uh, I can't yeah. remember the quote now. That was the win. Um, yeah, F in leaving. Yeah, that's it. That's the one. Yeah. So they just they they put the ball out the park every time with producing these absolutely top quality uh, graphics. They're just incredible. I, I sat right adjacent to that because luckily it seems. Oh yes, you were at the game. Yeah. Luckily, I was at that game, and when they raised that, I was just like, "That is amazing!" And I think it had underneath, like, kind of played. You know, the amount of games we played in MLS to date over the years: wins, draws, losses. A lot more losses than wins, you know, and it was like, yeah. we're but staying still, here, yeah. we're yeah. not going anywhere. It, it was amazing, you know, it summed up what we're all about through thick and thin, you have it, you name it. So, um, yeah, some good choices in there. Touch of class, obviously, with the B. Joe one. Um, most prized Orlando City jersey. I know you have quite, quite a few. <laughs> <laughs> yeah um oh god I, I mean i couldn't for all for like different reasons i mean the one that i've got on is that limited edition um monkey kit that um thankfully um alex Wright, a shout out from um orlando alliance den uh sent me um so it's got the, the viking jansen on the back so i absolutely love that um i've got two sort of signed chris Mueller shirts one which i've got framed up on my wall just there um, but also, like, you know, obviously, um, when Adidas was teaming up with uh, MLS to do the uh, parlay, you know, the recycled um, shirts as well, you know, that were limited edition. Obviously, we didn't have one last year, but I think I've got maybe two or three in my, I just, yeah. I mean, you know, I absolutely love collecting football shirts, but yeah, um, I, I don't think I could solely name one of my absolute favourites from Orlando. I mean, even just like I've got behind me the uh, sort of... Um, uh, training tops like the, the limited edition one so that was the americana and i've got the yeah. sort of one for veterans day and the uh, kick childhood cancer so yeah i just collect them all <laughs> honestly shout out orlando pride orlando so you need you guys need to stop releasing stuff because you're going to make oh. me feel bankrupt man every yeah. year you your 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 game is too good <laughs> oh that pride shirt is just a chef's kiss i mean that has to be yeah. for me the best out of both the men's and the women's shirts hands down um yeah. so I'm I'm ben said it. even benji said it on instagram yesterday yeah so all the the men you know they're they're sporting it and a few people who are um follow from like the uk who are like foot, avid football shirt collectors are like yeah because when we've seen you share that we've both gone and bought it and i mean it's sold out pretty much straight away so yeah. that just shows you how much people love it it really Incredible. Is awesome jersey. Um, your angriest moment supporting Orlando City so far? <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, I mean, there's been a lot. I mean, I'd probably maybe more word it as frustrated watching Orlando um, over the last couple of years. I don't think I could narrow it down to one moment. There's been a lot of frustrating times watching Orlando, but I suppose for angriest, it's usually at the the pro referees. Um, I can't remember. I think it was the game once against. Um, Columbus Crew, and I think it was Columbus RG. Crew, that was the game. That's oh. my one. And oh, I can't remember who the player was for Patrick Columbus. Mullins. He just it was threw Patrick himself Mullins onto the floor. Oh, uh, yeah, I think that's probably the most angriest I've ever been. But yeah, yeah I mean, my anger is usually more towards the referee and then my frustrations are at Orlando. I, I don't think I can narrow it down to one because unfortunately, there's been far too many. <laughs> yeah, but that, yeah, that Columbus Crew game definitely sticks out in my mind. That was mine too. We did a rant on it years ago. And that was, I think that's the, hard, yeah. the hardest we've ever been pro It was Patrick Mullins just took a dive. RJ Allen didn't touch him. They won. Will Trapp scored a Galazzo after we lost 3-2 I think yeah I think that's my angriest as well I, I share that with you right next one uh we've only got a few minutes left so next one quick fire um what's better hopping on the monorail at MCO just after you've touched down or stepping out and feeling the Florida heat when you get out to the front uh I think it's got to be, I know you like the monorail, but for me, it's, uh, yeah, it's got to be stepping out into that humidity and that heat. It's just so intense. As soon as it hits you, like, yeah, I'm in Florida. So, yeah, for me, that's when it really kicks in that this is, I'm in Orlando. Yeah, that, that has to be the one for me. Although I do like, you know, riding on the monorail as well to get to the, the main part of the, the airport. That's a superb airport for sure. Um, 
most uh, this one's easy uh, but I'm going to ask you anyway most hated rival club in MLS um, you know what I feel like it should be obvious because it was kind of sorry my dog's barking in the background um, the rivalry between Atlanta was kind of forced but I think with Atlanta that they've actually like, you know, they've talked the talk and walked the walk. You know, they said like, we're going to be better than you. We're going to be this and that. And they've done that, unfortunately, as much as I hate to admit it. They are like in a fantastic team, you know, minus last season. Um, but I think for me, I, I just, it, it's not even the bias of them being a fellow Florida team, but Lauderdale and Miami, you know, whatever you want to call them. Uh, just yeah they just they give us so much crap last year and bear in mind you know there was more playoff spots this uh, last season as well and they just they give us all of this and then they, they didn't walk the walk you know they just yeah I just think there's this entitlement this you know because we're like oh yeah we're David Beckham's you know love child team and yeah, yeah I just I, I don't I don't get Miami I really don't <laughs> Yeah, yeah. I don't like any of them. I know you don't either. <laughs> Especially in Miami, man. Yeah. Like, um, we'll see this year. I want to get a win down there in Lauderdale this year. That's that's something I really want to um, tick off this year. Um, biggest Orlando City villain in MLS? Uh, pro referees. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Ted Uncle, maybe. Yeah, um, yeah I, I mean, pro, pro referees, the pro um yeah I mean they've always been a villain no matter what game I mean I, I have all the the visions of um even it was the DC game with that ruining goal you know in the build-up to it I can't remember it's Dwyer who's trying to run down and then gets tripped by one of DC United's players uh, yeah Dwyer Dwyer yeah and it wasn't picked up on so I mean it ties into most frustrated but and angriest but yeah I mean it's got to be pro referees are the biggest villains um I mean in terms of like uh a player that you can always kind of guarantee scoring against us as much as I hate to admit it you know obviously they call him the daddy of Orlando it's, oh, um, Martinez unfortunately obviously he was injured last year um, so I think it'll be quite interesting though to see him you know playing because Atlanta weren't great last year and obviously Martinez is back and they have you know added a bit more depth to the team so I would really like to get a win over them so that it's we can just shut them up because they were like are oh, you only one because we didn't have um, Martinez playing Exactly, yeah. I mean, what, what a fire game to start off the season as well. You know, like um, Gabriel Ainsley's says in charge, Joseph Martinez, we're assuming is going to be back. You know, what a fire game. Can't wait for it. Now, only a few minutes left. So one more and um, yeah, one more. The sickest 2021 MLS jersey drop besides Orlando City. It's thick and thin. Oh, well, you know what? I'm quite frustrated at a lot of MLS shirts this year particularly like if they're away because Adidas has just gave everybody the same white template and then yeah. they try to cast it off as you know fresh or smart or clean and that this white marvel you know um incorporates this it's so far-fetched but um I think the ones that stand out have got to be you know um Philadelphia Union's shirt you know with the sort of lightning bolts that they've got on it the, the blue and the yellow yeah that's awesome and I think that was a fan design one, like a group would come together to to create that one. And then uh, LA Galaxy, you know, with the nod for the, the 1990s shirt that they had. Um, I'm not a big fan of LA Galaxy, but that shirt alone is is pretty nice. So, yeah. Yeah, I think definitely them too. I'm a big fan of the Jimi Hendrix as well. It is purple. They've kind of counterfeited us, but Sounders Jimi Hendrix kit is, yeah, I've got to admit. That's yeah, cool. that one is quite nice. I did quite like Portland's as well. I know it's kind of a bit Marmite for some people with the... Um, almost looks like it's been sort of stitched in the middle with the two yeah. different colours, but I, I did quite like Portland's as well. Nice, yeah, well done. The Galaxy one is cool for sure. Now, that's almost our time up for today, unfortunately, folks. So I want to say a big thank you to Charlotte for joining us. Um, we're just 14 days away now, aren't we, from Orlando City opening 2021 against Atlanta United, and I can't wait to be up late with you guys watching it, um, rooting for the team. Um, and I'm, I'm praying, you know, hopefully, you know, um, COVID rules are relaxed, you know, sooner rather than later. So we can get together again and do one of those. Yeah, parties. have another watch party because it's been forever. I mean, I'm really invested as well with the, the opening game because it's actually my birthday the same day. So Amazing. hopefully Orlando can give me the best gift ever yeah. by getting that win. <laughs> Maria and Co, you've been warned, it's Charlotte's birthday, so three points is a must, nothing yep. left. <laughs> okay, folks, yeah, pleasure chatting with you, Charlotte. Um, until next time, vamos Orlando. Yeah, thank you.